seven reasons to become an American Gunsmithing Institute certified professional gunsmith right now. And uh, that's the focus. Now, I will answer other questions for you at the end, technical questions on firearms, uh, whatever you like. But I'm going to right now just focus on these reasons uh, why you should become a gunsmith right now, why you should enroll before the end of the year. And uh, first off, let me introduce myself. My name is Gene Kelly. I'm president and founder of the American Gunsmithing Institute. Started the American Gunsmithing Institute in 1994. I am a, a, a gunsmith myself and a class two manufacturer. So, which means I have an 07 FFL, Federal Firearms License, with an SOT, Special Occupational Taxpayer stamp. And that allows me to build machine guns, uh, suppressors, uh, other NFA weapons. And in fact, I have, uh, prior to May 19, 1986, uh, we produced several and registered several hundred machine guns, which were fully transferable machine guns. And, uh, pretty cool and wish we could have done a lot more, you know. Uh, but the gunsmithing is something that's been part of my whole life ever since I was literally in high school. Uh, got out of high school where I would had got some background in welding and uh, a little bit of tinkering with guns, but I didn't really know much about guns. Um, after messing around at a junior college for a year trying to figure out what I was going to do in life, uh, it was suggested to me that I might want to look into this program at Lassen College, a gunsmithing program. And I went, really? I didn't even know something like that actually existed. And so went and checked it out. Turned out there was a three-year waiting list to get in. And so I ended up challenging the course that summer and got invited back that fall. And there it began. And uh, I ended up spending two and a half years in that program, uh, taking a gap in between uh, one year to uh, work at a gun shop in Sacramento, California, and uh, then went back to school and was hired out of school when I completed by uh, my instructor, Bob Dunlap, and then worked on piles and piles of guns that came through uh, Pacific International Service Company. So did the gunsmithing, continue to work at other shops, had my own manufacturing. Uh, you know, I'm still a class two manufacturer but I saw the need for gunsmiths and the training methods were incredibly slow uh, going through the regular campus-based programs. They're expensive, even if they were a junior college program because you gotta pay for your living expenses, you can't work. I mean, there's all kinds of hidden expenses on top of the enrollment and so on. And then the other part was all the stuff that they didn't teach me in school. And I mean, they had the best program at the time but there was a lot that they did not teach me in school. And the, the customizing, the uh, advanced machining, the welding, uh, you know, for gunsmithing purposes and really getting into that. And uh, all the different aspects of finishing and heat treating and so on. We got bits of it, but we didn't get the deep step-by-step, -step, this is how you do it. What we did get, which was superior to any other school was Bob Dunlap, is a master at teaching design, function, and repair. And you are not a gunsmith if you do not know step-by-step step internally how those firearms work. We had to memorize the sequential movements of guns like the 1911, Colt Single Action, Browning A5, et cetera. And as you put that into your mind and are able to see sequentially of each operation, what's happening first, what's happening next, what's happening in parallel, and so on. Then when you run across a, a, a malfunction in that firearm, you're able to look at it and, and diagnose where the breakdown is in that system and make the repair. And there's a number of subsystems within a firearm. There are you know, lockup systems, there's firing pin systems, there's sear systems, ejection and extraction systems, and so on. And so, what we did was Bob and I worked together and we created his, we took his design function repair course and then we expanded it because over the years, and we did this, you know, more than a decade after I had left school, uh, he had learned even more through his teaching and plus all of us working. 
And so we brought all of that and we put it into this step-by-step -step design, function, and repair course, DFNR, of the American Gunsmithing Institute's core program, which is our, what we call our level one uh, gunsmithing course. So anyway, just a little bit of background on that. Um, and I want you to understand further, you know, what we uniquely teach more than anybody else. I mean, our instructors typically have, you know, 30, 40, even 50 years as a gunsmith, oftentimes in a specialty area. So you have, you know, Daryl Holland teaching the machine shop course. Uh, he's a custom rifle maker and uh, teaches long range shooting and does many other uh, things related to the firearms industry, including consulting and design to some of the big manufacturers. And, and Daryl takes you into the machine shop and shows you step by step how to run, set up and run a lathe, how to set up and run a mill, you general machine shop course as well, all your support equipment. And you're seeing this close up that we never got in the classroom. You can never look over a shoulder and get as much knowledge as we can show you step by step with close up video. And of course the instructor will repeat it for you as many times as you want when you rewind it each time and watch it again and again. And later, sometimes years later, you may need to go back to something and review it before you do the work. That's true with the design function repair course, which covers pistols and revolvers, shotguns of all types. I mean, single shot up through various types of semi-auto and under semi-auto, you got short recoil, long recoil, inertia operated, gas operated, et cetera. So, there's all these different areas that we teach the systems because we don't want you and Bob in particular realize he didn't want any of his students to only learn one repair for one type of problem. And you're always like, okay, I'm fixing that problem. Uh oh, now there's a different problem or that problem appears differently or the gun isn't exactly the same model of gun that you, you learned on and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Well, when you teach a system, you can analyze a system, you'll know what to do. You know, a lot of the guys that work in factories, firearms factories, even if they're labeled gunsmith, most of them only know how to apply solution A to, you know, problem one. And you get to problem two and solution A doesn't work anymore, they're like lost. It's gotta go to a master gunsmith or some engineer or somebody. Um, and a lot of times they just literally try additional parts uh, until they find something that works. And that is not gunsmithing, it's part swapping. And uh, even an armor uh, is generally only at the level, they have greater knowledge, but they are usually at the level of being able to swap parts. When you're finished with our program, you should be able to not only analyze and determine what the problem is, but you know, you should also be able to make and replace the part. And if you go up to our master level course or even our enhanced master level course, you know, we're teaching you all the machining, uh, the welding, which is everything from gas through MIG and TIG and, and uh, stick even, but also cutting and so on. But we all even go further into detail welding for gunsmithing. So you have all of that, plus you have the heat treating, the spring making, the custom 1911, custom Glock, custom AR, Mauser classic hunting rifles, Remington 700 uh, varmint and long range shooting rifles, rebarreling, refinishing, all of that. And, and if you wanna know all the different courses that are included at any level, uh, just look on one of the enrollment agreements uh, you, which you can find at uh, AmericanGunsmithingInstitute.com. Uh, you should find that on one of the support pages there uh, or speak to a student advisor and you can talk to one of them at 1-800-797-0867. And as I said, get ready with your questions because uh, when I'm done going through these, I want to answer any of your questions and uh, try and give you the information you need to make a decision to move forward, particularly before the end of the year. And we'll get into the, the seven reasons why uh, just in a moment. So um, 
yeah. Also, people, you know, a lot of times when I when you went to school, when you're done there, you're done, and you really don't have any support. And we have support for our students. We have a couple of gunsmiths that will take your phone calls and your emails and answer your questions to the very best of their ability. In addition to that, uh, if you get in a bind as one of our students, you can actually send a firearm that you can't fix to one of our gunsmiths. They'll fix it, charge you fairly, but tell you also what you needed to do. And that way you can work on stuff with total confidence because you're not gonna be in a bind. You're, you've got a way out. Uh, so that's part of what we want you to have is that strong confidence understand the systems, know what you're looking at, but we got your back just in case. Further than that, with every mem with every uh, gunsmithing enrollment, we have a membership for you uh, for one year in the Gunsmithing Club of America. And there we have several thousand members where they are um, uh, gunsmiths or hobby gunsmiths, and they will share information back and forth so if somebody's got a question, there'll be other people to try and help, help you answer it. Plus we have moderators that are gunsmiths from our staff that will also answer questions. And we have more support there as well. You get the monthly gun tech DVD. There's a, about 170 different um, disassembly, reassembly courses on that website and, and a lot more. That's all available for you, uh, included for a year with your enrollment. So. Uh, and then our support goes beyond that. We have students that uh, graduated years ago that'll call us up to ask questions or get support. So, you know, we're really looking for the long-term relationship because our mission is to preserve our Second Amendment rights by preserving the gunsmithing arts and passing it along to the next generation. And we've been doing this now for 26 years. Um, uh, getting longer than that. As a matter of fact, we just about roll over 27 years. And, you know, the goal here has been always to preserve this knowledge and pass it along to the next generation and do so really at a fraction of what it would cost you uh, to go to a gunsmithing school. Because the investment there, while, you know, the investment is substantial in our courses because of what they are, but not only do you, are they you know, really superior to a campus base, they're so much less expensive when you don't have to give up your job, you don't have to travel, you don't have to pay all your living expenses to go there and give up, like I said, income for a year or two, um, when in fact you can start gunsmithing almost right away. Uh, people are amazed that with the training all there available for them, they can just get started almost, almost immediately. And you can get started on your own guns immediately, but you need to get an FFL, federal firearms license, before you start charging and taking people's guns in and keeping them overnight. So, and we teach you all about that and, and how to get to there. And then the enhanced master course, just to mention it, has over an additional 100 hours of training, lots of detailed information. It's a video library you can go into and it has pistols, additional pistols we didn't cover in other courses, even though we covered the systems, we're going deeper into those big guns, uh, rim fires, shotguns, etc. cetera. Um, also, right now, and actually this was a mistake, um, we included in the Enhanced Master uh, the $2,500 uh, firearms appraiser course. Uh, so people are getting that as well if they enroll in the Hands Master before the end of the year. That was actually a mistake that was made, but we honor uh, what we say. All right, so here are seven reasons uh, to become a certified gunsmith right now before the end of the year. And then we're gonna get to all your questions because hopefully you got a bunch of them and great questions, I'm sure. So I think the first, these are not in any particular order, one number may be a whole lot more, more important to you than another, um, but these are things that everybody should benefit from. And I, I think this is very important. It's very important to me. Uh, and this first one is take control of your life. Uh, right now, particularly with this last year, everything's been out of freaking control. Um, and 
this is one area where you actually can control your life. Uh, you can do the gunsmithing when you get the power, when you get the knowledge, they can't take that away from you. And, uh, I, you know, quite honestly, I don't know what the economy is going to be like in the, in the future. Um, with some of the wackos that are in charge, <laughs> I'm not super optimistic about part of it, but I'm optimistic that no matter what happens with those guys, I'm taking charge of my life and I'm going to be in control. And being a gunsmith is part of that. It's given me a great deal of confidence and I'm sure you're going to feel the same way. Um, a lot of people have been really got slammed this year. I mean, people that have restaurants or worked at restaurants or, uh, I mean, dozens of other, you know, uh, industries and travel industry. And I mean, I, I, you could go on and on, right? I don't need to, you know, expand on the pain, but we all know how a lot of people just got the rug yanked out from underneath them, no jobs uh, and uh, benefits running out, all kinds of terrible things. And, I've never been one to allow that to happen because, I mean, I can't say I haven't been blindsided a few times. I certainly have. And, you know, and I was certainly broke as a student and broke early in business, but I knew that I could do things. And, you know, what we teach is really critical thinking skills and understanding these systems and all the different sub skill sets that you learn, whether it be the gunsmithing itself or the understanding design function repair applied to other systems or the welding, the machining in the master course and so on. You can apply those things and make money a hundred different ways and you become a more valuable person. So uh, another thing about taking control of your lives, a lot of people have started gunsmithing from home. And you can get an FFL in most places and do gunsmithing from home. They definitely recognize that. And that means that you could still be working when you aren't dealing with the rest of the stuff. And even when people couldn't travel around, they could still ship guns to gunsmiths. And in fact, most of the people I know that were gunsmiths, they were busy, especially if they knew how to do a little bit of marketing, which we also teach in our master course. So that's number one. And I don't know how important it is to you, but being in control of my life is important. And that's one of the things that we make investments to do. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the ways we spend money doesn't help us become more independent and more self-reliant, but this investment does. And that's an important point I want you to know. Uh, number two, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, now is really the time to get your FFL, your federal firearms license. It's easy to do. It's inexpensive. It's like 200 bucks for three years right now. And um, there isn't a lot of hassle over it. I know people that have been getting licenses in less than a month. Um, you know, COVID has made a lot of it go online with ATF and it's just actually made it go faster. Um, now, we always tell everybody 90 days should take, you know, expect 90 days, but it has been going faster. And, uh, but one of the key things I want you to know is we don't know what the future is. And if you get an FFL right now, and we include the entire package, including the step-by-step, -step, how to go about it with every level of our courses we wanted, whether you're level one or enhanced master, any of those courses we're we're giving you that package with it because we want to encourage you to get your FFL because the moment you've got your FFL, you're in. Okay. And if they change the rules, you're already in. And so I strongly recommend you do that because nobody knows what the future is going to bring. And it isn't the big liability to have a federal firearms license. People think that you're opening up your whole house and, and everything to uh, exposure. And that's just not the case. And we go through that and we created an entire uh, video just on, uh, you know, all these questions around an FFL. Uh, but I strongly encourage you to get your FFL, get it now. We include the packet when you enroll and um, it's pretty easy in most areas. I'm looking down at my notes. If you're wondering what I'm looking at here, just kind of keep myself on track. Uh, but like I said, it's fairly inexpensive and it's going to get you access to things like you're going to be able to continue 
to have access to the stuff you want to get. Uh, and number three is, and this does not apply to everybody, but it applies to people in the business when you get in the business. So if you get an FFL and you start gunsmithing and you can charge as soon as you have your FFL, and there's a lot of things we teach you how to do. We have a course that's included as a bonus with uh, every level of the course, and it's called the Money Makers. And the idea is it just shows you, okay, these are the common things people want done. Here's how you properly mount a scope. Here's how to install a recoil pad. Here's how to do this, 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 and this. And these are things you can do even before you've completed your gunsmithing course. Um, you can certainly be doing clean and oils with all the diff different uh, assembly and reassembly courses that we have available to you. There's no reason you shouldn't start making money right away gunsmithing. Even as you're learning the systems, you're maybe not able to yet um, do all the repairs, but there's so much more you can do that isn't that. So you'll get there after you go through the design function repair aspects of the course. But all along the way, you'll be familiarizing yourself with firearms if you get in those guns to do clean and oils in particular, particular uh, not to mention other fairly easy stuff you can do that we show you how to do step by step. Now, here's something that's actually pretty cool. And like I said, it doesn't apply to everybody. Um, but if you're in the business right now in any way, if you've already got an FFL or you're in a, another somewhat related business, um, you might be able to deduct your entire education enrollment this year uh, against your taxes. Now, I'm not a tax guy. I'm not providing you with tax advice. Let's be clear about that. You got everybody's situation is different. You're going to have to talk to your tax advisor. But hey, pretty cool if you could, right? I mean, why not let Uncle Sam pay a little bit for it? But again, you got to check to see what your situation is. The fourth thing is as a gunsmith and FFL dealer, uh, you're going to continually have access to firearms, magazines, ammunition, parts, all of that. And I'll give you an example. Here in California, you know, they've got some pretty stupid laws. And one of the things is around magazines. Well, as a gunsmith, I'm exempt from that magazine, that high capacity magazine law. Uh, they've carved out an area specifically for gunsmiths. So we can possess high capacity magazines. So again, moving up to what was item number two, which was get your FFL now, get the packet as you get involved and gunsmithing is a perfect reason to have that FFL. When you have that FFL, you'll get access to the wholesalers. And even though things like ammo is in crazy, you know, crazy prices and short supply these days, that won't always be the case. And uh, you're going to be able to get at least buying it at wholesale. Um, and when things aren't crazy, you can continue to buy. And, you know, another thing is when you're running this as a business, a lot of the things that you probably are already spending money on become business expenses, such as, you know, well, guns and ammo. You know, if you build a gun that's a sample gun, that gun, again, I'm not a tax guy, but that gun can be deducted as a sample. Uh, you need magazines, you need ammo, you consume those things, right? Uh, you have to go to the range and test fire things. So you, you need those things. Um, internet, truck or car expenses, uh, you know, cell phones, computer, et cetera, et cetera. Travel, travel to the shot show, whatever. Uh, a lot of these things can become legitimate business expenses. And if you're earning money in your gunsmithing, you can be offsetting some of that earnings with legitimate business expenses that you would want to do anyway. So really good idea to have a good tax advisor who can help you decide what you can and can't do legally. Uh, but it is a big opportunity. And part of the reason to do it now is with the bozos that may be getting in there uh, running our country, um, I expect taxes to go up. Well, 
you know, if you're spending your money pre-tax and it's a legitimate business expense, then that makes a heck of a lot of sense versus waiting until they've taken all the tax money out and then they give you what's left. And then you got to go buy the same stuff. So we need to get smart. And uh, that's one of the things when I go all the way to the top of number one and say, take control of your life. That is a part of taking control of your life. Creating a gunsmithing business can be a very real business. It can be a money-making business if you run it right with the right mindset. We teach mindset and marketing and business in what we teach. Uh, but if you are don't even have that tool, don't even have that opportunity, you, you miss out on these things. So that's that's up to you to decide, you know, what's going to be different. Um, and then being a gunsmith, you're immediately at a minimum able to maintain and customize and repair your own firearms. And that's important because, I mean, you can spend a lot just on customizing your own firearms. And if you do it wrong or you don't know what you're doing and why you're doing it, you're going to end up with a lot of parts. And I mean, you'll spend more money on stuff you didn't use or stuff that you thought was going to be great. And um, then you're going to invest in being a gunsman. So get the knowledge first. But personally, um, I have a great deal of confidence because I know that I could do anything I needed to do to keep my guns running. And that's even right down to making a gun if I needed to from scratch. Our gunsmiths could do that because we've taught them the machining, the design and function, how to heat treat, all various aspects. I mean, building a gun is really not as hard as some people would let you think. Uh, it may not be, it might be a little more crude than uh, something that came out of a factory, uh, but doesn't have to be. If you've got the machining skills or learn the machining skills, and we are teaching you all of the basics and beyond of machining, but you'll also know those systems that you've applied, the same firing pin design and function of firing pins, chambers, feed ramps, magazines, ejectors, extractors. You see where I'm going. You, you basically, by knowing those things, could take several blocks of steel and build a firearm from scratch. That's the capabilities you'd have. And, uh, you know, I hope the courts are going to protect our Second Amendment rights, but I'm never giving up my rights because my rights are internal now. Uh, I'm going to exercise them in whatever way I need to, uh, because I know how to do it. And I, I hope you do will too, because that's the kind of people we need in this country. Uh, item number six, and that was, is, uh, you're going to have the respect and the admiration of your, of your associates and friends. I mean, I, I know that when people find out I'm a gunsmith, uh, they're very respectful and they admire the skill set. Uh, and it doesn't take, I mean, I, I had a guy stop by today. Okay. And he knew me from a couple of years ago and just wanted to follow up because of the gunsmithing and some stuff he wanted to do. He's probably going to end up becoming a student even, but it really came down to, you know, that respect that you get. And it feels good because, you know, there's a lot of things you can do in life where you don't get any respect. I mean, what was it, Roger Dangerfield that always said, I don't get any respect, you know? Well, uh, it feels like that sometimes. I've been in jobs where you don't get respect. And uh, frankly, uh, people get respect as much being a gunsmith as they do being a doctor. So, and there's fewer of us. So if you want that, uh, and, and it's a good feeling, and frankly, it's something, I'd hate to go through my whole life without having the respect of others and uh, personal respect, right? Also, your own respect for yourself of what you're capable of doing and what you've done. So anyway, I think that's important. We're about to get to those questions, so get ready to, uh, to do some Q&A there. Um, number seven reason why you should get enrolled before the end of the year. Uh, this is kind of an obvious and self-serving one for us, but self-serving for you, and that is 
the 30% discount that we're running right now on all levels of the professional gunsmithing course uh, and uh, at midnight on New Year's Eve. So coming up in just a couple of days. Uh, after that, that's gone. Um, and we'll be staffing the phones till about 7 p.m. So frankly, if you want to get started in gunsmithing, you know, reach out to your student advisor. You should have a student advisor assigned to you. Uh, if you don't uh, or don't know it, just call in the number, uh, the, the standard number 1-800-797-0867 and just leave a voicemail message and tell them, you know, who you are, your phone number, best time to call. Uh, you know, please leave your address as well because then they can look you up in the system and find out who you're assigned to as a student advisor. And, and they'll get together with you on the phone and work out the details and get you enrolled uh, before the end of the year. So, um, you know, and speaking of the end of the year, I, guys, a new year is about to start. Uh, thank God. I mean, this last one has been crappy to say the least. Uh, but, you know, choices, right? We all get the opportunity to make choices. And choices have, you know, have... Uh, consequences. So if you choose to do nothing, you're going to stay where you're at and you're going to, everything will be the same, good, bad, or indifferent. But if you choose to invest in yourself, invest in your learning, invest in something nobody can take from you, uh, you're going to have the benefits that we were talking about the last little bit, the benefits of access to guns, being able to repair things, getting the admiration of your friends, family, and neighbors, uh, being able to do a home-based business uh, in control of your time. That's another thing. Control your time, right? So when you're running a gunsmithing shop, and it's particularly where you're uh, in total control and you're working for yourself, if you want to shut down, you just basically, you shut down, you're gone for a week or two weeks or whatever you want to do. Uh, I have gunsmiths that I know that basically they let every, all their customer knows, n know, here's when I'm going to be gone or gone hunting. And all the work needs to be brought in by X date. Any work that comes in to this date will be you know, worked on. Anything after that date will have to wait until I get back. And that's kind of the power you have because there just aren't enough gunsmiths. I mean, we've, we've trained thousands of gunsmiths over the years, but the, the need is so great. I, there's last number I saw was 385 million firearms is the guess. Nobody knows for sure, but is the guess of the number of guns in the United States. So if 10% of those needed cleaning, customizing, or repair, and I guarantee the 10% need cleaning, customizing, or repair, that, uh, you know, that's what, 38.5 million guns. There's not enough gunsmiths, guys. Um, so, you know, fill the gap. Uh, get involved, fill the gap. All right. So, yeah, I will say here, you know, one thing we've done to eliminate all the risks for you guys is we do have a one-year money-back uh, guarantee on the entire course. Uh, and hardly everybody, anyone that takes it, it's almost always because they're just so doggone broke uh, in that in their their own life, what they've done wrong, that they're just a wreck. Uh, other than that, they don't come back because our students are successful. They're building a business. They know that this is a tool that they dig into time and time and time again. But if you need it to take away any worries, it, that is available to you. Um, just to kind of wrap it up here and we'll get to the questions. And that is, uh, if you want to get enrolled, like I said, give a call at that 1-800-797-0867 number and speak to those student advisors. We've got to get it wrapped up. There is an enrollment agreement and there's things that, um, that you, you know, is part of the application process that you have to have done in time. So you want to do that right away. Uh, and we're down to the last couple of days here. 
So I'm just going to, uh, because I know somebody will ask me, somebody will probably come in late. I'm not going to go through all the details of what I said, but just seven reasons to become a gunsmith right now before the end of the year include take control of your life, big for me. Uh, now's the time to get your FFL, and we include that whole packet to get you going, and you should get it in less than 90 days. And it is number three. Uh, you know, they're, all of a sudden, a lot of these things become a business expense and deductible. Get your own tax advice. But I've had some experience in that area. Uh, as an FFL dealer and a gunsmith, you're going to get access to things you wouldn't otherwise. Guns, firearms, I, I mean, firearms of all types, ammunition, magazine, parts, and so on. Um you're going to be able to maintain your own firearms and those of your family and friends. And right there, that's worth a lot to a lot of people, especially in this unsure environment. Number six, you're going to have the respect that you deserve. And I think so many of us have gone through times uh, where we're working somewhere and we're not getting the respect we deserve, deserve. And frankly, if you've got a good option as gunsmithing, there's a point where you can leave that behind, job, old job, dead job, whatever, and uh, and be your own boss. And uh, we have guys that are doing this part-time, full-time, or as a retirement income, because again, they get to control uh, their schedule or life and what have you. And then finally, again, you get to save 30% on the entire course, no matter whether you're at the level one course or all the way up to the enhanced master, uh, the master course is like one of our most popular, but get the details of what's included in those from the student advisor uh, and or looking at one of the uh, enrollment agreements. All right, uh, that is going to, let's transition now to some of those questions. And I'm going to move this right over here to the side of my other screen so I can see it. Um, I'm trying to uh, make sure I understand. Oh, here it is. Okay. Kevin. Kevin's asking, you have gunsmiths. We can, uh, I think it's, he's saying something re get, uh, get booked with if we get over our skis on a project. Yeah. I know what you mean. And the answer is yes. That's um, in addition to our gunsmiths being available by email and phone. That's our staff people. We have other gunsmiths that are instructors, that they will actually do gunsmithing for you. So you get in a project and you go, man, I don't have the right tool for this yet, or I'm way over my head. And by the way, most gunsmithing does not need a lot of exotic tools, um, doesn't at all. But there's our, you know, occasional situations, but mostly you get over your head, you can't figure it out. We haven't been able to walk you through it. You can send that gun to them, they will repair it, They'll charge you for it, but at a wholesale price, so you can pass that along and make a profit with your customer. But this way, you'll know what they ended up having to do, and that'll help you out hugely, but mostly gives you the confidence. And that's the reason we offer it, because we know if we give you the confidence to, to get started, to give it a try without fear of getting boxed in, you'll... 99 times out of 100, literally, uh, you're going to be just fine. You'll be able to do the whole thing yourself. Um, but we want to give you that backstopping. Uh, what is the average income of gunsmiths in the USA? Man, I tell you what, it, it really varies widely. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Um, first off, there's a lot of gunsmiths that, that are embarrassed. Uh, well, many of them don't have it, proper training. So, you need to kind of take those guys out of the equation. But some people are embarrassed to actually charge what they're worth. And we work to try and fix that, you know, uh, what I call head trash uh, with our marketing program and our business success program, which you get at the master level. And uh, so gunsmiths charge varying amounts all over the country too. And so what I usually say is compare with an automotive shop. So if you're trying to set a price of what you should charge, an automotive shop in some areas probably charge a lot less than they charge here. But I mean, they're up to about $150 an hour in my area, which is Northern California. Well, 
if you're, I, I tell people start at about half that and move up. So charge like $75 an hour and then move up because you don't have anywhere near the overhead and uh, tool expense, meaning like lift racks and alignment and, uh, and all of the electronic diagnos uh, diagnostic equipment and so on that an automotive shop has. So you can start at a lower uh, rate, but you know, so in that case, $75 an hour. Well, if somebody is in the backwater of some area that the, where the cost of living is very low, their automotive rates might be 80 bucks an hour. Well, then you can start at 40 and move up from that depending on demand. But you can also make part money on parts and additional services. So what a particular gunsmith makes is all over the place. Some people only make $1,000 a month as a little part-time semi-hobby business doing you know, 10, 20 guns a month. Uh, other guys do very high-end work and push the six figure level. Um, there are a number of gunsmiths we know and are associated with and or have trained that are making six figures. It's not the norm, but it is totally up to you. And it's also up to you what else you wanna do in alignment with it. Uh, there's a lot of people do training with it. There's firearms appraising, which I told you uh, was a mistake, but got included with a master course free as a bonus uh, until the end of the year. And that's a $2,500 course. Um, that allows you to do appraisals of firearm collections, which there's a huge amount of guns that are turning over with the baby boomers uh, and the greatest generation passing on. Uh, very large collections, uh, a lot of money involved there. And so that's another, we have some guys that that's what they've ended up just specializing in. Um, as a, and they got started in gunsmithing and that's what brought them to them, but they started doing more and more praising anyway. Uh, so what you make just like any other business, I don't care if it's carpet cleaning or, you know, uh, trucking company or uh, contractor, whatever, there's a whole range and gamut of what people make. There is not a standard, uh, truly across the country. Okay. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Epperson. Uh, and then the seller is saying, I'm looking at four or five courses on specific firearms, uh, families. Does that en enable me to join the GCA club for the year you talked about? Um, and does that enable me to call for the problems I can't handle, say, 15 years from now? <laughs> Very optimistic. I'm 72. Right on. I like your optimism. Uh, well, let me break that down. Two things. No, the armors courses are just that. They're for the armors level, not, you know, every professional gunsmith will learn from them. And we even include the entire library with the enhanced master, uh, just so you have all those additional resources. But that is not the gunsmithing that provides you with the year's membership and all the techno support. To be honest with you, we still tech support people even that aren't our students. Uh, we will do that. Uh, just because we won't believe in our community and try and help out as many people as possible. But a lot of the answers they won't understand because they don't have the bed the baseline, the bedrock understanding of the design function repair we teach, right? So if somebody's just saying, hey, I've got this one widget gun and it's got doing this, and, I, and that was the exact conversation I had with a guy today on a 1911, and the, without him understanding the systems, he can't properly diagnose it. And if I made suggestions of what to do, he could dam do more damage to the gun than not. So uh, the support, the deep support is for our, our students, but the Gunsmithing Club of America is open for membership to enroll in. And it had, there's a monthly fee. And for that, you get a whole lot of training. You get a two hour DVD every month. There's hundreds of hours literally online of disassembly, reassembly courses, then it goes on and on. And, and we'll, you know, you can get information on that. Okay. Um, but as far as the professional gunsmiths, if they call us 10 years from now or 15 years from now, like I said, and said, hey, uh, I'm one of your students, I'm, more than likely we'll know who you are. Uh, and I got this problem. Yeah, we're going to try and help them out 15 years later. Okay. Uh, Scott, 
is uh, and it's a Hono, Stefano. No, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. I'm very bad. Uh, is frog lube that is put on a hot fire and good or bad? What we do is someone's put frog lube on a gun they think needs uh, to be clean now. Well, frog lube is is not bad. Um, it's a, as long as it's applied, you know, properly the way it's intended. And with just like any lubricant, you can put an excessive amount on. You can put it in the wrong places. Um, there's I, you know, a lot of what we do as gunsmiths in the cleaning process is clean up the old gunk that's in there from excessive oil. You excessively oil a firearm, it collects a lot of junk. I mean, I've <laughs> cleaned Browning A5s that look like they had the whole rice field shoved in them, you know, uh, with, it's amazing what it will collect in a gun, especially an oily gun, excessively oily gun. So you don't want to do that. If a gun needs cleaning, one of the things that uh, we've been really happy with is uh, ultrasonic cleaner of a particular type, one that's really made for gunsmiths. And uh, if you want to make a little note on that, uh, go to gun, let's see, let me think about it for a second. Uh, Pro gun cleaning system.com. And there's a little short five minute video there that kind of gives you an overview of that. Uh, but that would be the approach there. Um, Jason, uh, are you GI approved? If not, not, is that something you're working on in the future? Uh, we are working on it. Definitely. There are some programs that we are, are approved for. Uh, we work with the VA for on under chapter 31, uh, for disabled veterans. Um, that's an area we've been able to help a lot of people. Um, you do need to have a disability rating, uh, and there are, or is other criteria, including kind of what you're doing right now. So for example, if you're a computer, you know, crypto uh, engineer and you're making, you know, 300 grand a year, they are probably not going to fund you for learning gunsmithing um, because you can make so much another way. But, you know, you're working as an, as a, like some of our guys, I have one comes to mind, a diesel mechanic and his back's going out. And he's like, I can't do this forever. And he's got a disability rating, but he's like, hey, I can sit at a bench and work on guns for a long time. By the way, the guy that said he's 72, um, we've got guys in their mid 80s that are just starting gunsmithing. And I recently got a letter from one. Uh, he's 80 years old, um, retired military, and he had lost his wife for like 60 years and was kind of lost. What do I do next chapter of my life? I'm by myself. Uh, he enrolled in our gunsmithing course because he was always fascinated with firearms, had a history of firearms. And within one year, he had opened up a gunsmithing shop with a shooting range, had all kinds of new friends and said he's having the time of his life. And he had just turned 80. So yeah, any age works just fine for this. Okay, Mark is saying, do you recommend applying for the FFL as soon as we receive the course? Yes, I do. Um, I, I would like you to get that and get that going immediately because look, the sooner you have it, the sooner you can start taking guns in overnight. Even if you're not totally ready to work on something, you can log them in and have them in your inventory for as long as it takes you to work on them. Um, it allows you to start buying parts and guns and so ammo right away. It, it means that you're in, and if they in the future create any other rules, you're already on the inside. And so um, there's a lot of examples of uh, people with licenses and so on already being grandfathered in. So that's, that was one why it was one of my seven reasons, and actually there were two facets of it to do it now. Um, so yeah, we'll support you in that. We'll get you the package out right away. Um, okay. And uh, so Neil's saying, I purchased the practical package already and the 20, 1022 package and the Cowboy Action course and the Glock course. I think they're great. What about this specialty approach? Um, it is a wonderful approach to add on to your gunsmithing. What you're lacking and we can help you with is your core design function repair. You're getting parts of it from a ar high-end armor's perspective and the custom specialties, 
but there's that fundamental bedrock of your knowledge you really need. So if you decide to enroll, the, you know, your investments you've already made, we will take those off whatever uh, package you choose. So if you went to a master course, several of those courses are included in that, and we would just back that out of your total costs. So definitely talk to a student advisor about that, Neil. Okay. Uh, John uh, Radcliffe says, should I try to get my FFL on my own before enrollment? Reason being, if I'm rejected, even though I have no felonies, will I be able to cancel my enrollment? Um, well, two things, John. Uh, number one, I really recommend you get our package because the success rate in getting an FFL has been extremely high using this package, following what it tells you to do. And you won't be rejected as long as a couple of things. Number one, as you said, you have no felonies and you're not a prohibited person from owning a firearm. Okay, that's number one. Number two is comes down to just having a local business license. And we talked to you about in the package about how to go about that the right way so that you don't end up rejected. So definitely get enrolled, get your packet, go through it right. And then um, you've got a one year that you can cancel uh, and get a money back guarantee on the course. And we do that to eliminate these exact problems where somebody is like concerned uh, but I will tell you that you get rolling, you're going to get this as long as you don't give up. Um, it is very doable. And in fact, you can even, uh, if let's just say that you were in some situation where you couldn't get an FFL uh, from your home. Okay. And it does happen time to time, certain circumstances, mostly in the, the bigger cities, right? Where you have some issue. You can get a small shop. I mean, a small uh, commercial space. If you haven't seen the course, uh, uh, gunsmithingcourse.com, you know, in there on the same one that was on the DVD that you probably received, it, it shows you the size of a shop that you need. You've got a gunsmith there that runs up to a thousand guns a month through his gunsmithing operation. And his main area is only a room about the size of the one I'm sitting in, you know, about, you know, 10 or 12 by you know, 15 or 20 was the size of his shop. And uh, then he had another area that was her sort of dirty area for doing welding and case hardening and stuff like that. But you can find very inexpensive places uh, to rent for commercial space and run your shop out of it. And frankly, you don't have to be in a high visibility, high rent area. Uh, it can be very affordable. So a lot of ways to do it. Um, let's see. Uh, Scott says, so if my car shop is 68.50 an hour, my rate would be 34.25 an hour. Uh, yeah, it could be, but just because that shop rate is 68.50, that seems incredibly inexpensive to me. I think you could go higher with your rate uh, because again, there's fewer of you as a gunsmith than there are car shops, uh, automotive shops also, um, I would say to you that you don't have to just do work in your local area. A lot of our gunsmiths get guns shipped to them from all over the country. So, you know, if, you're, if your rate was 60 bucks an hour and you're doing very high quality work and, and a good reputation and you're advertised, you can be getting work from California or New York or other places where they can send the guns and the higher cost of living. So you're, you become very affordable to them. Um, and by the way, you can ship guns to a gunsmith pretty much anywhere in the country, as long as it's not a restricted firearm of some sort. Um, so that gives you the ability to expand. And if you want to do even more specialized, so we have some guys specialize in antique restoration. Others will like uh, Doug Turnbull. Uh, he has um, you know, made an entire business out of restoring firearms and case hardening and and so on. But there's many others that build custom 1911s, custom Glocks, uh, do competitive ARs, whatever it is. So specialization is another way to increase what you're able to charge. Uh, plus you make money on parts as well, but it also requires that you have that core knowledge. Otherwise, one, you may do something wrong on that platform 
or two, uh, you're going to miss out on all the other work other people would bring you that, you know, or they, they, your existing clients, you're building custom guns for them, but they're going to have other guns they're going to want fixed, ones that aren't those custom guns. And you want to be able to do all of it. Uh, Barney says he's retired, income's a thousand a month. How can I pay for any courses I choose? Uh, a down payment is iffy. I'm very eager to learn. So um, what you ought to do, Barney, is contact and speak to one of our student advisors, have a discussion with them. We'll find out whether or not there's any opportunities for you to explore uh, funding with any other you know, workforce investment or VA or whatever. And, uh, and we also have an online option that might meet your needs. So check into that. Um, Epperson is saying, is it true that Lassen College has changed from a gunsmith school to a standard junior college? Actually, it was a, a junior college um, all along. And the gunsmithing program was just an add-on to that. Um, I don't know what's happened recently uh, but that it's had a gunsmithing program there for many, many years. Bob Dunlap was the head of it, and uh, he wasn't the first instructor, but he really built the program. And, you know, he's no longer teaching there. Uh, in fact, sadly, he's passed. Uh, but he, um, the, their program is not what it once was. Um, they went to a very short term program doing little bits and pieces. Um, and frankly, I haven't checked into the program for quite some time, so I don't know the latest. Um, what is the cost? Uh, John Hall is asking, what is the cost? Living the role, uh, but don't know cost. Cost uh, ranges, we have, we have uh, gunsmithing programs, certified gunsmithing programs, as little as $597 for what we call the practical courses, not our professional gunsmithing course. Uh, on up to $15,000 with a full tool package and the enhanced master and all that. The level one course uh, starts at $4,997. And that is the 168 hour comprehensive design function and repair course on DVD with all the support materials, some of the customizing, some of the other different things. And then you move up, there's a level two and then the master course, which is our most popular. Uh, which is $9,997, which is a pittance compared to two plus years at a college and a lot of the stuff that they didn't give you, I can tell you, uh, that we have training on in our courses, the extra customizing, all the business uh, work stuff, the expanded machine shop and welding, et cetera. So that's kind of the range, but to find out what's right for you, uh, you know, talk to that student advisor again, call the 1-800 number, 1-800-797-0867. Talk to a student advisor, ask to find out who you're assigned to. And if you're not, uh, then someone will definitely take care of you. And then um, I just want to remind you that the last and final reason uh, to do it now is it's 30% off and that ends at the end of the year. So that should be pretty good motivation along with all the other things, getting your FFL, getting the, making the choice of what's different in life and, and so on. So Scott says, thank you. And I appreciate that, Scott. Uh, Bob Pellets, uh, do you have a list of where to get parts and, and would we have access to? Yes, we do. In fact, as part of the level one course, we not only give you one of our parts suppliers, we give you several, but we give you a couple of big catalogs. And one of the companies has, I mean, three catalogs that, well, you can see them behind me, uh, is actually, those, those are not the same ones, but um, there's several parts catalogs that are about like this thick that we include. Uh, and yes, we give you sources to a lot of stuff. Uh, Neil says, interesting, thanks. By the way, my FFL, I think, is coming through. I have a local biz license, just to tell other people that Issue might be your local municipality rejecting cause of your home address and so on. Yeah, that's the only thing. That's why we our process is here's how you go about it. And that's where you get um, get around some of those things. Not, Neil's asking also a couple other things. Uh, what about uh, liability insurance? And uh, we provide you with different places you can get liability insurance. It's not expensive. 
Uh, in all my years here, I've never been sued as a gunsmith and I'm not aware of any of our students that have ever been uh, sued. And that's literally thousands of students. So, um, and we give you several places to go get, get insurance. It's not, again, it's not expensive. Um, Neil also, <coughs> excuse me, get a little drunk bronchitis cough here. No COVID, I guarantee. <laughs> uh, Neil says, by the way, uh, Mr. Guns Dunlap was great. Love his subtle humor. His instruction is amazing. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Neil. Uh, you know, I learned from him personally, and uh, he was quite a character. Um, the beautiful thing is we preserve that so everybody gets to learn still from him. And uh, I, I, you know, equate it to like how cool would it be to learn the actual thoughts and processes being taught by you know, uh, Bruce Lee, for example, uh, versus somebody today that's, you know, three, four generations later uh, teaching something. I want to get the real thing. And that's what you get. Mark's thanks for all the information, he says. Uh, Randy says, recently purchased a full armors course along with the firearms appraiser and expansion packs for the enhanced course. If I purchased the enhanced master course, can those costs be folded into the course? Yeah, absolutely, Randy. Yeah. Um, Anything you invest with us, as far as any of the courses you buy, if they're included with something else, we take those costs off. So you definitely want to give us a call and uh, the student advisor can help you sort that out. Just make it very clear to them. Uh, now, I will say this, they have to have been purchased from us, from the American Gunsmithing Institute. If they were purchased on eBay or from some guy or whatever, they might be a knockoff. Uh, we will not honor those because Obviously, we have overhead and staff and royalties to these instructors and everything else. So, um, but yeah, if you purchase from us, we always honor that. Okay, Richard uh, Chinook. Uh, hi, just turned 40. Good for you. I'm a little past that. Uh, oh, and lost his business this year to shut down in California. Can a guy who's never had a tool or any job fill up, figure out uh, gunsmithing? And the answer is, yeah, that's what we teach. Now, I mean, some people, the, the stronger the background you have in you know, mechanical things, the better off you are. But it's really a thought process. And it's most important you get the knowledge right here between your ears of what is going on in that gun. That's why we use cutaways, too. All through the teaching, you see us using cutaway firearms because you can look right in the gun and see what we're explaining to you. And so once you understand design, functional repair here, then you can teach your hands what to do. I don't care. And it's the same with any trade, right? You know, if, if I hand you a hammer and a screwdriver and you've never used one before and you don't know what you're looking at and I say, go build that, you're like, you know, you have no idea. But if you understand exactly what you're building and how and why, then you can apply those tools. Okay. Uh, Travis, and, and by the way, Richard, I'm sorry you lost your business. There's been a whole lot of stupid has gone on in California along with the rest of the country. That is my opinion. But you know what, guys? See, by having being independent, I can say what I want. And, uh, and I, you know, that, that having that autonomy and control, uh, I believe in that. I believe, and that's part of what we want everybody uh, that we teach to experience. Okay. Travis says, if I want to order all courses from level one all the way through master course, uh, what is the cost or does master course come with all the, okay, good question. Um, so the master course comes with everything below it. So the master level course, which includes the welding, the machining, the business success, a lot of the various um, customizing courses and so on comes with the level two, which is, uh, includes many of those other things. And then it includes the level one, which has all the design function repair we talked about. So yeah, it's when you, when you get the bigger package, you get everything else included with it. Uh, hopefully that's clear. And again, the best thing is talk to a student advisor. Um, they can go over your specific situation, figure out what's right for you. And that's awesome. Uh, okay. Oh, Lee says, Lee Sellers, says, I pronounce my name Lee, thank you. Uh, one of our grand granddaughters may be interested in doing this when she turns 18. Assuming I get one of the professional courses, can I bring her in as an apprentice? We need to start with her own courses. Uh, we actually have family plans. 
So a family member uh, can study with you using your same material at a much lower investment. So uh, depending on the course level you select and the best thing to do is to, again, speak to a student advisor, let them know that when you enroll. And also we've had people as young as 13 go through our course. Now, if they're under 18, they have to have a parent or a guardian approval. Uh, but the range for us has been 13 to the mid 80s. Okay. Uh, Neil says, uh, feel for Travis. I haven't made a dime since March. Good luck, brother. Wow. Good luck to you too, man. But again, time to break loose. Don't let next year be like this year. Uh, Randy Jewell, with a level one course only, is it reasonable that one can be successful gun spending business? Yes, it is. Uh, because you're going to have what you need to understand the firearms. From there, you're going to decide, I know you will, that once you get rolling, you're going to want to go, okay, now I want to build 19, custom 1911s. Let me get that course. Or I want to upgrade to the full master course. And you can do that. We don't penalize you. So you only pay the difference. Okay. So yeah, get going, guy. Okay? Now's the time. Uh, uh, Chris K, do you have military pricing and for veterans? I'm, I, am I able to use the GI Bill? You're not able to use the direct GI Bill right now. Um, there's a whole accreditation process and so on. And I can't even talk about what we're doing on that. That's, uh, but what I can tell you about is we're already approved for a couple of different programs, including um, the uh, Chapter 31 uh, under uh, for disabled veterans. <coughs> uh, and again, please talk to a student advisor. Uh, do you give return customer pricing for more classes? Well, we have you know, the levels that are stacked up. So you, when you go to the next level, you only pay the difference between whatever level you're at and that level. Um, is the FFL instruction in the basic class? Yes, it is. It's at the level one, uh, at that, that level one course, which starts at $4,997, but it is discounted 30% off that right now until, uh, Friday night, uh, the first of the year, what I mean, Christmas Eve, whatever. <laughs> Been doing this too fast. New Year's Eve. Okay. Trying to answer as many questions as I can for guys. Chris again says, do you, uh, uh, oh, is the FFL instruction? Yes, I covered that. Uh, Chris again, am I able to retake tests if you don't pass? Absolutely. Uh, they are online. They are not easy because we want you to understand the systems. We're not trying to fool anybody. We're not trying to trick anybody, but we don't want to make it easy. We want to make sure that you know that you know the information and we'll be safe. Uh, and Chris says, you've answered a lot of these already. Yeah, <laughs> there we are. Um, we're here for you guys. All right. I think, wow, covered a lot of questions. There are a lot of good stuff. Um, if anybody else wants to, uh, to ask a question, feel free, or we'll wrap this up. I just want to remind you, hey, take advantage of these seven reasons, right? Take control of your life. Stop getting kicked around. You know, don't be a victim. Uh, number two, get your FFL now. Now's the time. We definitely can help you with that. Uh, in fact, uh, there's support for you on getting questions answered with our FFL package. Um, the, you know, you might be able to deduct the expense. I'm not going to be your tax guy, but it's possible depending on where you're coming from and what if you're in a business already or what. Um, as a gunsmith and FFL dealer, you're going to get continuous access to firearms and a lot of your expenses that you're going to pay out anyway might become business expenses up here to you and your tax guy. Um, you're going to be able to repair and maintain your own firearms and that of family and friends. And uh, in this world that we're looking at, I think it's pretty doggone valuable because uh, who knows? And, you know, number six, as a, as a gunsmith, you really do have a sense of self-worth and you get a lot of respect and compliments and it feels good. Uh, do good work and people appreciate that. And it, it's just so hard to find a good gunsmith. You guys can fill that, that void. And when I say guys, I mean guys and gals, because I do actually, have, we have a lot of uh, women that also enroll and do very well with gunsmiths. Um, 
And then, um, you know, lastly, like we said, you know, now's your opportunity to have some savings. If you want to take advantage of it, uh, do it quick and uh, give us that call at the 1-800 number. Um, and for you guys that are, haven't written it down yet, one more time, 1-800-797-0811. All right, guys, I think that's it. We're going to call it. Thank you so much for your time and your interest. And I uh, hope you'll be enrolling uh, and be one of our students soon. Right after the first year, we're going to have our first introduction uh, for our new students. We'll have an orientation. So come on aboard. Talk to you soon. Bye now.